This video will be slightly different, as I don't know how to preface this. Months ago, my contact at New Type HQ contacted me, wondering if I was willing to donate a kit to a charity he was working on. And I figured, mm, why donate a kit when I can actually paint one? That would be cooler. And so I did. Rather than doing something generic or, as I tend to do, paint model kits to the original color scheme that they are, with slight variations in tones. Because personally for me, I enjoyed seeing kits that I would own personally being done up in the original paint scheme that I saw them in the anime or they were originally depicted. That's just my personal taste. And then if I had an extra of a kit, then, you know, if uh, the mood hit me to paint it differently, I would. In this case, I figured I would do something different rather than the standard green GM that you see in Gundam 0079 8th MS team. I decided to do something different. I figured wouldn't it make more sense if the GM sniper was actually camo so he could fit into the jungle surroundings which was the area in 0079 that they were in and I decided to set about doing so. This is my first attempt at doing a camo paint job. Uh, I sort of winged it. A mixture of common sense and masking tape can go a long way. I lament that I didn't go for a darker color choice than white but hey whatever first time. I did do some light weathering, or some decent weathering. I wanted the kit to be used, but maintained. I wanted it to stand out. The theme was Welcome to the Jungle, and I think I achieved that. Since I felt that I was on a timetable, I didn't exactly add every little nick and ding and subtle nuance that came to me. Bullet damage, but then again I thought if a sniper is good, they'd never be seen or shot at. Usually when you knew a sniper had his gun on you, you were probably already dead. So I went with that. The power canister and backpack I didn't really weather. I assumed that since it was an interchangeable part that maybe they would clean it up a bit more than usual. I should have added some rain streaking to the energy can but I, I, I don't know I just forgot to. So it's probably a big faux pas. This kit has slight issues as in paint issues, mistakes made in the sense that there are some places that didn't get the pattern correct and so on and so forth. It might not be anything anyone will notice. The red jewel for the scope also was a big faux pas on my part. I assumed Bandai would have a sticker on it. No, the sticker was already attached to it and if it fell off the little piece of paper then uh, it wasn't very sticky. So I had to paint silver on the back and it didn't go as I would plan or like. The front nozzle of the gun is glued on because the little plastic tab that held it in place was so small that if it fell out of my hands, it broke. So, there you go. Not anything you'd notice or have any trouble with, unless you went through the hassle of actually really pushing on it. Then of course it would snap off, it's glued there. So, it would take some force to get it off. And that's all I can really think about, as far as issues go with the kit in and of itself. Everything else is fully painted. All weapons, all little knickknacks, even the horrendous looking pilot figures that I didn't film at this current point in time, which is unfortunate, but believe me, they're nothing to write home about. It's the classic Bandai pilot figures that are so ugly, they look like little clay figures. They're just atrocious. Now I should review the kit in and of itself because I've pontificated far too long. I just want people to watch this video and know what they're getting into because you can bid on this starting on November 18th. This kit will possibly go up on eBay or another bidding site and all the money will go to the Children's Hospital of Oakland, California. I don't see a cent, and I don't think I'll be the one shipping this off. So if you buy it, it has nothing to do with me. I only painted it. Oh, crap, I forgot. This also comes with a case. I, I got one for it. Uh, Jesus, how could I forget to film that? Oh, well, whatever. Let's review the figure. The RGM79GM Sniper, best known for the short appearance in 8th MS Team, sniping civilians out of the sky. Good look. Is actually a pretty cool kit. Once it's all put together. This is a real, real old mask grade. How old? I don't know. It's got to be over 10 years or more. It's dated. The inner frame is lacking. There are some details in the legs, but the torso and the waist area, there's absolutely no detail. It's kind of like almost a high, it's, it's pretty much high grade level, honestly. So yeah, nothing to write home about. It really isn't. The posability is all right, I guess. Once again, 
nothing to write home about. This model kit is probably best for putting in one standing pose and being done with it. Because frankly, it's an old kit. Don't expect getting the same level of movement out of this that you would get out of the Master Grade Dynamis. It's just not there. The hands are atrocious. I did take the time to paint some extra Kotobukiya hands, I believe. Probably got the name wrong. But, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It didn't come out pleasing. Some of the joints were weak, so I should have used acrylic paints on the hands since they are very intricate rather than lacquers. Oh well, lesson learned. Am I right? Overall, where this kit really shines is the number of accessories it has, which are a metric ass ton. Between the sniper rifle, the submachine gun, the beam rifle, the rocket pod launcher that actually has a cool gimmick where you can have the like rockets hanging out of it like it's firing. So that's pretty catchy, you know, it's pretty snazzy. It's something I like. Oh, interchangeable backpacks so you can have the normal GM look or the GM sniper look, whichever you prefer. Basically, these are the strong suits of this kit. I mean, it's just best standing there. This isn't something you fiddle with, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I painted it, so I wouldn't recommend fiddling with it. I mean, the paint is very durable from what I can tell. I haven't had any chipping issues or anything. But this is basically made to be a display piece. I wanted it to stand out from a standard GM. I wanted it to feel like something an ace pilot would have. I also went through the hassle of weathering the dry transfer decals. But when I did that, I also ran into the issue where streaking my weathering paint really didn't go well with that. I probably should have did an extra clear coat to protect my already distressed decals that look pretty cool before going to the next phase. But the beauty of weathering is sometimes you make a mistake, it actually looks cooler than you originally intended. And that's the beauty of weathering. And I know some people might go, well, why didn't you weather the weapons? I figure the weapons would be easier to maintain, considering, you know, they would go back routinely, whereas the mobile suit would constantly be in active duty in all sort of situations. Rain, well, not really snow, because the area didn't seem snowy. Uh, you know, storms, sitting out for days, hours in the water, in the sun, in the elements. They say good snipers can wait days, if not weeks, for the person they're meant to kill. So I figured the same would be applicable to a GM sniper. Am I right? Or maybe I was overthinking it. Who knows, really? Overall, I'd say I'm fairly proud of this kit. It's an interesting look. It's an interesting design. It really pops. It has that right level of life to it. I saw no need to add any LEDs to it because, you know, why would you want really bright lights with a sniper mobile suit? Am I right? I also added some metal thrusters to the backpack because why not? You know? Something a little cool, a bit snazzy for this ground type rather than the standard thrusters. They look kind of lame. And I thought it'd be real dumb to try and paint thrusters. You know, some sort of camo look. It, it just wouldn't work for me. And that should be about it because I can't remember much else about this kit that really stands out to me. Maybe it's because the GM is a very lacking old kit, but once put together, it looks really cool. Would I recommend it? Sure, if you like GMs. But if you want a kit with more gimmicks, more life, more... Savoir faire, if you will. That's probably not even the right phrase now I think about it. I probably would recommend you skip the GM. It's a grunt suit. If you're looking for a GM with more flair, more personality, then I would suggest waiting for more P Bandai GMs to come out. There's like a Wolf Schneider custom coming out and has Gatling guns on it. That thing's pretty cool. You could go with the GM Sniper 2. That one's pretty bombing. I would recommend this kit if you're looking for a cheap master grade that's quick and easy to build. But with a standard fair sort of master grade, it doesn't stand out that much. So if you want something with more life and flair to it, then I would skip the GM. And on that note, I should just get the hell out of here because I'm filibustering at this point. It's uh, it's 7 in the morning. I haven't slept. I just realized I had to finish this video ASAP before going back to painting my next kit. Uh, so I'll catch up with you guys later probably after a nap. Mm -hmm.